How can we know if a person has fanconianemia? For better understanding of this video, we recommend to watch first the previous introductory video about this disease. In general, it's difficult to tell which clinical aspects allow us to identify a patient with fanconianemia. It's usually said that the disease is highly heterogeneous. A particular aspect that highlights this idea is that up to a third of the patients are physically healthy. Still, in the previous video we mentioned that fanconianemia patients develop aplastic anemia during their first decade of life, acute myeloid leukemia during their adolescence, and solid tumors from their 20s onward. Despite this, not all the patients develop these anomalies. 75-90% of patients develop aplastic anemia, 10-30% of patients develop acute myeloid leukemia, at last, approximately 30% of patients by 45 years of age develop solid tumors. As the difficulty of identifying a fanconianemia patient in a traditional manner is clear, a genetic diagnosis is needed to verify this disease. Nevertheless, knowing the most frequent anomalies found in these patients might be useful to correctly guide the diagnosis. Approximately, half of fanconianemia patients have skeletal anomalies, involving both the hand thumbs and the forearm. They can have small hand thumbs, have two hand thumbs, or even have none. The same is seen in the forearm, as they can have a small radius, or it can even be absent. Another peculiarity is that half of patients show a shorter height. This can be even more pronounced if they additionally carry an insufficiency of the growth hormone, a normal alteration or endocrinopathy. Regarding endocrinopathies, a high number of patients carry at least one. For example, patients usually show high levels of insulin in blood, but only an 8% of patients have been diagnosed with diabetes. It's particularly easy to identify some patients by looking at their face, as they have microcephaly and microphthalmia, that is, a small head and eyes. However, only 20-25% of patients show such features, so even though it might be useful, it cannot be extrapolated for all patients. Other anomalies seen include skin cafeola spots, called like this because of its color, kidney anomalies, and hypogonadism. In spite of hypogonadism, some women can get pregnant. It's important to keep an eye on pregnant patients, as blood cell levels can lower even more during pregnancy. Both hypogonadism and hematopoietic stem cell transplantation are risk factors of osteoporosis, a bone mineral density anomaly. These reasons would explain the high incidence of osteoporosis in fanconianemia patients. Even though not all the fanconianemia features have been discussed, we have listed the most common features found on these patients. In order to verify the diagnosis, a genetic diagnosis is required.